afternoon, right? <coughs> at Fourth Street Beach at the GOP picnic. <coughs> I'm going. Are you getting close? We're getting close. I'll get some announcements. Awesome. And then we can, uh, okay. we can go. Ray and I are just having a nice conversation. All right. Uh, why don't we get started? I'm rolling in. What's our main uh, meeting? Uh, I got a few announcements to make before uh, <coughs> we introduce our speaker. Uh, thought I would mention one thing. Uh, one of the things I promised myself I would not do today <laughs> is say that there's a new sheriff in town. So you will not hear that from me. He didn't say it. Uh, <laughs> Okay, some just general announcements at meetings. Uh, 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 August 15th is the next uh, monthly uh, Manistee County GOP meeting at the Onekama Township Hall. August 17th is the uh, next uh, Manistee Area Tea Party meeting at uh, 6.30 at the Bungalow Inn. The speaker will be uh, Shane Trejo from the from 10th Amendment Center and he's going to be speaking on privacy. Right, August 20th is the big uh, ninth annual pig roast for Ray in uh, Anakama Village Park, and that's at 4 o'clock. Repeat that date, please. What? Sunday, Sunday the 20th. Thank you. Ninth, yeah, August 20th. Sunday, August 20th. All right, and we have a special meeting on Friday, September 8th at the Bungalow Inn. It's at 6.30 with dinner at 5.30 for those that are coming. We are going to have uh, Speaker of the House, Representative Tom Leonard here. Um, I want to thank Ray for arranging or instigating the visit uh, by Speaker Leonard. But uh, an opportunity for all of us to uh, uh, listen to what he has to say and uh, ask you some questions. Uh, with that... Um, our speaker today is Cheryl uh, <coughs> O'Hagan, our newly elected Cheryl O'Hagan, who was here two years ago, I believe. Three years. Three? Two? Two? Yeah, for uh, our picnic two years ago, and I think you all know him, so welcome our speaker. Oh, yeah. I was thinking that when I came over here, it was two years ago, and I was campaigning. It's when my previous sheriff, Dale, said, it's your time, John. You've been here 27 years, it's your time. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, this is a little new to me. I'm like, okay, but you know, I was his undersheriff for eight or nine years. I learned a lot from him. So I got in the campaign mode, and here I stand today. And you asked me to be a speaker, so I wanted to just kind of give you some highlights of my first six months. Some of the things I'll tell you will probably really open your eyes really, really big. And I hope it, it can make some conversation for us and maybe ask some questions. Um, because it's been an interesting six months. When I started out, the very first step I took is I made Ken Folk my undersheriff. So at sheriff school, they're all like, you're actually picking the undersheriff, the guy that ran against you? I said, yeah. I'm picking a guy who's got 25 years experience. I know exactly how he thinks, and he's just exactly the opposite of me. And so together, you got two halves of a pie, put them together, I was excited. That it took me a while to get him to say yes. I was a little worried, but he joined. So my first line of business was going to be, I have to train Kenny to be my undersheriff. Well, Kenny has to train the new lieutenant to be emergency management. So those are two big things right out of the gate. We walked in, in the first couple weeks, I get two <coughs> designations. And within six months, I've had nine. Wow. Okay, so that's what I said. <laughs> As I go to the county board every month for public safety, the first month, it's no big deal. There's two guys. One's going to leave. He's, he's older. He's 59. He's just had enough. I get it. Then another guy was going to leave. He's going to the road commission. He was a 10-year sergeant. Going to the road commission? So I tried to figure out a little bit of why. So I have an exit interview. I started something where we meet with employees once a month. The administration takes the employee out to lunch. We pay for it. Three or four of us get together, and we want to talk to an employee one-on-one, -on -one, hear their concerns, know what's going on to try to draw everybody together. I started hearing pensions. I started hearing better money. I started hearing issues in the jail all the time. Nobody cares what goes on in the jail. Well, that was kind of hard for me to swallow because I get it. 
And I'll get in a couple of those things, some mental health issues, some things that jail deals with that you would never see unless you come and listen to me, because then you'll hear it. So we're going through the six months. I have nine people total leaving. So I had four corrections officers. The least amount of time was one and a half years. He had some family issues. Dad got sick. He had to go help with the business. Not a problem. So I'm starting to feel a little better. It's just not me. <laughs> Then another one was going to leave. He's going to move out east. He's going, I'm like, okay, he's another tenure out of the jail. I'm like, man, I'm losing a lot of experience here. And the sheriff of 40 years already left, so I've lost experience. So I'm really, I'm very cautious. Well, then the deputies started talking in February and March. I lost a deputy. He's going to um, Ottawa County. So I sat down and I started getting to some of the nuts and bolts. I said, you got to tell me, why are you going? And again, I hear a lot of the same things. A little more money, better pension, things that I talked to the county about five years ago when they started changing benefits, doing things, and I get it. I understand that part of it. Well, this is the other side of it now. This is five, six years later, the trickle effect. There's other places that still have some better benefits, better money, and so the younger people, they'll, they'll chase the dollar. And I get that. But that doesn't help me. But the other thing that he said to me that really caught my eye and my ear, he said, I don't feel safe. Okay. Now, this was about in month two. So that conversation led to a little more conversation with one or two other deputies saying, Sheriff, would you feel safe when animal, <coughs> excuse me, when animal control is backing you up? So we've had an issue over the last several years, and I'm very careful how I say this because, first of all, no, when the state police is here, they're, they are my best friend. They're here. I love it. But we got to think back. That post closed five, six years ago. They had 15 to 17 troopers in Manistee County. Keep that number in your head. Right now, they have five counties they cover. Now, if the average was 15 at each one of those five counties, how many officers would that give them? Where's my math, people? 15 times 5. What do we got? 65 officers? 75 officers. There's my winner right there. So, so think about this. They have 26 in Cadillac right now that cover five counties. Now, I'm very careful to talk about this too publicly because I don't want to invite all the bad guys to my town. But our night shift... The state police has one car, their captain just confirmed with me, one car for five counties. Well, something has to give here. I have ten deputies, and I get it. My goal is to always have backup for them. So most days we have two. But there's so many duties that we do that the state police don't do. We get court-ordered mandates, transports, that's the big one. We get an order from a judge today, deputy, sheriff, you will transport this guy. Example, Lenawee County. Okay, Lenawee County, we made five trips in about three weeks, back and forth, back and forth. We have to, it's a court order. Well, who's going to be covering the road? So we check with the state. You have a car? Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. More often what happens is they cover, they'll come into our county and say, yep, I'm in service, Manistee Benzie, Manistee Wexford. What does that mean? It means they're not here long, so they might start here. So I'm taking all this in, I thought, okay, it's time. The previous sheriff talked about this for the last three years. Uh, this is going to be my bandwagon. I'm going to public safety. I'm going to lay it all out. So I got all the statistics in February from 2016. All the dispatch calls for service. The sheriff handled 81%. The state police, 19 That got my eye. I'm like, okay. People calling all the time for traffic issues. And I could sit up here and name them all in my head. From Stronic to Pierport to Calva to Potter Road to the South Shore Bear Lake, the East Shore Bear Lake, to Cot Road, and the list just goes. I can't, I don't have the people just to answer. So I thought, well, I'm going to share all this at public safety. I'm going to bring in the key players. I'll give them a little dose to my commissioners. And mind you, I have a great relationship with the commissioners right now. I really, really do. But this is month number two, and I'm in here already going, all right, what strategy am I going to use to get some more help? So I gave them the numbers. The next month, I brought in some key players. I brought in the prosecutor. I brought in the state police, which our chairman on the board, Jeff Doss, says, I don't think the state police have ever been here. Well, I'm doing 
takes for you to hear. I want you to hear it from them. And they said it eloquently. He said, we just don't have the staff. And we have to cover five counties. We do the best we can. We talk every day. So my board's listening. Prosecutor gets up, says the sheriff, their complaint law is like this. City police is like this. State police is like this. And they gave the numbers. I agreed with that too. I got the 911 director gets up and says, I'm in there all the time. Every time we go to dispatch a call, it's the sheriff. It's the sheriff. Well, the sheriff's responsibility to you folks is to answer calls for service. I can't just say, I'm traffic only, it's a holiday weekend. So my battle is, you see all these state police cars? Let's, let's just say 4th of July weekend. How many people still have quite a few state police cars? Anybody? I saw two of them. Okay, two, three. A lot of times you see a lot. They don't handle any complaints for us. They work traffic. That's their job. That's their role. And I get that. I had a hard time with that for years because it's always been that way. We just put extra people out. Well, the extra is what's hard when you only have 10. We do 12-hour shifts. So you can picture it like this. You have two on the days and two people would be off. We have two on nights, two people off. There's still two people that we call floaters. Anytime somebody calls in sick, takes vacation, has to go on a transport, we move those people around. So most of the time we have two people. When we have three, we function very, very well. If the state police are here, they're a bonus to us. We can handle complaints, we can do everything. But lately, this last six months, we're running around with one guy, sometimes two, and at night, I'll tell you this, we double up at 10 o'clock, so there's one county car on. Now, what did I say earlier about the state at night? One car for them for five counties. So how much do they come into Manistee? So where are we when I get a deputy who gets a domestic, where I get a drunk, where I have something of priority? It's me calling people in, in the middle, which I'll do. I have no problem doing it. But something has to give, because the guys are 10 complaints down, 12. I had some that were 18. I couldn't even believe it. 18 down? On overtime, you're coming in tomorrow and you're getting them done. I'll take this information to the county board. So every month, that's what I did. So we're cruising along really good. Commissioners are listening. They're buying into it. And amongst all this, is I, I still have people leaving. Another one goes. And key players are leaving. I mean, someone left now who's on our scent team, our undercover team. He's been on there for three years. He left. Another one, we have a commotion for a sergeant going on at the same time. We get wind our canine officer, our canine's on his way out. He's got uh, some nerve damage in his legs. He's been with us about seven years. So I got all this stuff going on. I'm trying to fight for people, and I'm like, this is what it's like to be the sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> Whew, my God, I'm young, I'm 49, and I got lots of energy because that's what it takes. Yeah. But I got a good relationship with the board. I'm showing them we're in cruise mode till the other day. So they found out they're in a little deficit. Now, I don't know how close you folks follow the county government, but 10 years as undersheriff, I watched. Every year they bank. And again, 10 years ago, it was a lot more money. It was 300,000, it was 280, it was 240, and it kept going down. And the county controller would say, you know, yeah, but it's going down, and it was. So these last few years, they would always start taking some fund balance. They say, well, and by the way, they have 2.2 million in fund balance that's unrestricted. 2.2 million. Remember that number too. So as I'm going through these numbers in my head, I listened to the auditor come in in December and he said, your fund balance is healthy at 17%. You're at 22. If you have some issues, spend some money. So I'm thinking to myself, is public safety number one? Is it a priority? It has to be. Because I hear all this other stuff, you know, and not putting down anybody else. I get it. Everybody has to have a piece of the pie. But if I can't give public safety what it needs, give you the officers you need, you see what's going on in the world. You see it. I don't have to make anything up. Cops getting shot in their car. Seriously? This drug epidemic is just crazy, out of control. We were just at a train this a uh, couple days ago on, um, I sent like three guys because now we have to worry about these young kids becoming victims to trafficking, human trafficking in West Michigan? Are you kidding me? So everything's coming. I have to have the people to send. 
So we come to the board meeting the other day and I was sitting really good. Floating along four o'clock, my deputy's in there. I asked for two. I said, you give me two, I won't be back here again. But what I will give you, I'll give you two guys on the night car and then I'll do stuff with our day shift in the afternoon to kind of overlap. We will cover it. Well, they put one in. And I said, I really need two. I'll redo how we do cars. Because we're on a program I started 10 years ago where you get a new car every year, at least one. Well, sometimes there's accidents and things happen. And a couple of the years, there's actually three cars. One of the years is a four car. Well, that hurts. Okay? And we were always getting rid of them around the 90 to 100,000. Safety, you start putting a lot of money in. You can still get some money back if you get rid of them. One of my commissioners said, hey, can you look into that to, to get those to go a little longer? My county controller said, I hate to interrupt that program. You know, it's been really good. And I said, I'll look. So this is what I did. I come back this year and said, tell you what, this year I'll, we need one car. I normally would ask for three. So there's savings right there. Two cars, roughly $60,000-ish in that neighborhood. Okay, that's, that's my goal. Next year I guarantee two, and the year after that, two. And they're like, well, how will you do that? Well, you don't worry about how I'll do that. I will move the cars around. I'll put certain workers put lots of miles. Other ones don't. They work complaints. I will manage that. But I will save the money. I need to. They ended up, they gave me one. Come down for the vote. And they were 371000 in deficit. Now, I started to talk about that. In the end, the last 10 years, the last three, they've taken from fund balance and they've never had to touch it. Never. We're always under budget. You're under because of department heads. Electeds, people like that are doing the job and they're saving the money. There comes a the time we have to spend a little. And I think we're at that time now. So our commissioners start talking. Well, we need to uh, we need to reduce this 371 down uh, to under 300,000 or, or I'm just not comfortable. So by him saying that, they started to go around the room. The next commissioner, who I invited to do a ride along, I invited to the jail. Totally been in my corner. She kind of sided with Jeff, saying, ooh, 300 and some thousands is a lot. And I get it, it is. It's a lot. But we gotta prioritize. So then another commissioner stood up, and he's kind of really been a good supporter of 911, of police, he understands it, and he spoke. Well, then it was like dead silence. And I thought, here's my chance. This is my chance. I said, may I speak? And I got on my soapbox for about three to four minutes. And I'm very passionate. If, if, if you get to know me at all, I mean, I'm going to go to work for my guys. This, this sheriff's office isn't about me. You're not going to see my name on the board or anything like that. I don't want that. But I'm here for the people. That's why you elected me. So I'm going to come fight. I'm going to stick my neck out. Some of these things I say were on TV today. They might say, wow, I can't believe you told them that. These are facts. Everything I want is transparent so everybody understands what the sheriff deals with. Because there's a lot. So after I spoke for four minutes, I shared a couple things that I was just sharing with Ray. This actually happened. Our officers, two-man car, a guy opened the cage, who originally was cuffed, got the cage open, started choking one of my devs. So they pull off, the fight is on. They get in the back seat, they're trying to get this guy in control, they get a hold of his taser. Guess where my backup came from? City of Manistee. 17 miles, the city police got there before state police, before tribal police. So I shared that. I actually had a video, and I showed the video last year. But we had some new commissioners, so I made sure I told them about that. But that's just one instance. There's many times when you don't know who your backup is, or it's animal control. Well, animal control, he does a great job for us. <laughs> he's great. And I'm telling you, he's there for us. If I didn't have him, I don't know what I would do. He's not trained as a cop. But he's there for us. Marine Patrol, that's a state-funded program too. It's a 75-25 match. All right? I can't have my Marine guy coming in off the road to do transports to provide backup because now that starts messing with the numbers that I have to turn into the state. So in reality, I need help. I wouldn't come to the board. So they decided to go around the rest of the room, the commissioners. And they, one by one, agreed that we need another body. So uh, yesterday, when Ray was there in the tentative budget, I have one depth. That's a good thing. Now I've got to get really creative how I'm going to stretch that as far as I can stretch it. Because they were very, very adamant about not putting that in. So one of the commissioners said, 
I agree, John's got a lot of problems out there. Well, it's not that I have problems. There's issues that have to be addressed, okay? So what I started doing two months ago when I heard the safety thing from my staff, I started giving everybody the county commissioner's name, email, and phone number with whatever issue. Well, one commissioner in particular said, my phone's been ringing off the hook. <laughs> so be it. Now you know how I feel, okay? But, and I, and I even always tell Tom Kaminsky in private, we, we close the door and I said, Tom, I don't want to come in here asking for money. This is my first year. I just want to come here and report all the good things that are happening. But I can't do that if I don't have the staff to take care of the problem. I can't have my staff keep leaving. So um, amongst all this is when the guy says, well, I'm going to be going to Gaylord now. That, that's the last one who just left, the, the undercover guy. He was a five-year guy, great officer. Guess what his reason for leaving was? Safety came out, but he said, you know, they could have hired me right before they switched over to that hybrid plan, and they didn't. And they waited about six months, so I'm on the other end of it. I can go to Gaylord, and there's a 25 and out. There's a better multiplier. There's all these things, more money. I can't, I can't compete with them, and I get it. So, tell the county board, I am not about just spending freely and crazy. I don't want to do that. I want to make sure that I can address your concerns and answer the calls. So, looks, we're looking pretty good right now. We're going to get the one guy, we're probably going to get one car. That car is going to be the canine car. We are going to get another canine. Um, my initial plan is to do a revenue sharing grant. As you all know, we get revenue sharing grants twice a year. Pretty much public safety does very well in those. That's the money from the casino, from the slots. There's a 2% and then it trickles down to the county and so much has to go for public safety. That's in the compact. That's how it works. So we, we benefit very, very well from that. I mean, we have some of the best equipment. We have cars. I mean, we, we keep up. A small agency should be pretty proud of what's here in Manistee County, because I know I am. Um, we've had a couple major things going on. I'm going to talk about the jail, too, in just a minute, just to give you a little background on that. Um, we've had some major cases. One of them, um, we found a lady that was drowned in the water. I don't know if you recall that, reading it in the paper. You know, I even got on camera and said, at first, it is, it's suspicious. It's not every day you find a 40-year-old young lady floating in Manistee Lake, okay? So through the entire investigation, we learned at the end, through autopsies, everything, that we, we could rule out foul play. It really looked like it was an accident. But I met with the family, went over everything. They didn't want to hear it at first, but when I showed them everything, showed them what was kind of in her system, and the levels, and what that particular drug, it was an amphetamine, could do to somebody at that level is almost like unheard of what you can, I mean, it's like a psychosis. It's like a schizophrenic. It's anything can happen. So then when we laid everything out, it was very under, and understandable what happened. It was an accident. Unfortunate, terrible. This, mind you, amongst when everything's going on with my employees and coming and going, we get a couple of major cases. The Big Al's case. You remember that one? There was a bad accident in front of Big Al's. That was in March. Now, nothing's been on the news about that. I had to be tight-lipped. It's in the hands of the prosecutor right now. I will say, about a week after that, um, we have a, a person of interest. We have, inter we have interviewed that person. Have the car, have the guy. Had that about seven to ten days after the case got started. Can't get into all the details now, but that will all come out later. So I'm, I'm really hoping we get something come out of this now. Um, one side of the story is they want to say it's an accident. The other side is, well, it's an accident causing death. You left the scene. So that's for the attorneys to work out what charges come about. But we should be hearing something relatively soon on that. And the other case just happened the other day, too, the dollar store in Wellston. I heard about that. We had a guy who walked up to him. He had a warrant for him. Very pleasantly, we wanted to stop him. He's just going to bust straight through us. Out the door they went. Everything's on video. The fight's on. Out in the parking lot. We have two guys. It took two guys to hold him down until three more could come to help. But that tells you the kind of people that you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. So if one guy's out there without an animal controls your backup, I can see that. I get that non-safe feeling. You know? So we are moving forward. We're handling things. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to offer a conditional offer to someone who's coming back to Manistee. He's been in Charlevoix for seven years, been wanting to get back home. He's got some experience. I'm excited. 
I gotta say, out of all my hires, honestly, they are they're a breath of fresh air. I can't believe it's such it's such a competitive market now. There's jobs everywhere for cops, hard to believe. They're everywhere. And so to get somebody and get personalities that are friendly and they're smart and they want to be here, you know, it's like if I can just keep them, you know, I gotta I gotta keep that. And I don't want to push them away by saying, are you going to go somewhere else? Because some of them said, I don't want to leave. I love it here. I just know what's still out there. You know? So we're battling, but we're doing good on the law enforcement side of it. On the jail side, a lot of life was on that jail, right? Well, it's just a couple things to do. We've been running average daily population, probably in the 30s to around 40. Okay? The jail set can hold 68. So that's a good thing. Well, if you've ever met my jail administrator, this guy's all about making money. Because in the jail, we could have 40, 50, 60 inmates, and we only had two people working all the time. Two. And some people say, well, what happens if there's a fight? What do you think? Because I brought some commissioners in. What do you do? Well, they call on the administrative side and hope we're there, for starters. So this started about a year or two ago. So we said, you know what? Let's start taking other inmates from other counties. So we started doing Wexford County. Okay? Now, since April of 2015, I just got the numbers this morning. How much do you think this county has saved in two years? 300,000. Not that close. 159,000. But that's 159,000 we didn't have to do. Yeah. And we told them, we can take on the responsibility, but we got to get help. So basically, if you can give me some help, we can find some revenue to help pay for that. And that's kind of what it is like this day and age. We always have to try to find a way to help pay, which is okay to a degree. I just, I need the people to do the things that can make some funds. <laughs> so that was one program we started working on. Then, so we hired a couple of what we call technicians. Hired them in like 12 bucks an hour. Well, what the heck's a corrections technician? We thought, and the previous sheriff thought, good idea, we can have a answering the phone, hitting doors. Well, then the state changes the mandates and says, well, if you have even a technician, within a year they have to have this 160-hour training, which is $1,200. Well, if we're going to send them to that training, who's going to want to work for $12 an hour when the other ones are starting at 15 ish So I thought, well, there's going to be another battle that we have. So I went to the county board this year. Because again, we've been bringing a lot of revenue. We've saved on the medical. We keep swapping, jumping around. We finally had a great medical program. We saved 30 or 40,000 by switching. You add that with 150 some or 200,000. And I was asking for people that was like 30,000 for what I was asking for. So the county will use that money in other places, of course. And then I have to remind them how we brought it in. But that money went for the roof, or that money went for this, but the whole intention was to for staffing, so we could keep staffing up. But we're doing a pretty good job now. We got three on all the time, so it's pretty good shape. We're running around 40. It took three of our guys to hold him down. He ended up getting tased. Just a mess, because history tells us, and I found this out after the fact, that he's been a patient of Central Wellness in the past. He's been to Kalamazoo a couple different times, so he has legit mental health issues. Why is he in my jail? So they give him a PR bond. Now I'm nervous because he's out. He goes to the fireworks stand and he assaults somebody because they won't take his credit card because it won't work. He's back in our jail. Again, I'm not knocking Central Wellness. Come out here. He does. We got to do something. We do everything we have to. They come out. Oh, yeah. They, we show them the video. We witness everything. Our nurse ended up getting a, the okay from our doctor. We have a doctor come in every other week. And we have a nurse that's there three or four days a week, about 20 hours. So we stay on top of all this stuff, which is really, really good deal. Well, they end up giving him a shot, so now he's calm. So when we go to the doctor at the hospital to get him cleared, the doctor won't sign the certificate because they don't see the behavior. So what do we do? And it's just this vicious circle. And again, now we don't have one. We have four total. And then we have three in the front, so they all have to be separate. If you ever toured our jail, we have three holding cells. We try not to put people with people with mental health issues. Just because we don't know what they're going to do, how they're going to react. It's very scary. We pushed one from the front to the back. Who just recently was, and 
I'm just going to say it like it is. She was at, this will give you an idea of what our CEOs deal with. Taking feces, rubbing it all over, eating it. They don't belong in our jail. But yet, it's been said, well, we know where they are and they're safe. No, no. That's a huge liability to us, to my staff. So that will be something that I will carry the torch for for a long time. And I will continue. And I understand there, there is some movement. I've heard some things. How fast it goes, I don't know. But again, a jail, we're not healthy. We're, we're just, we're, it's too difficult. So I want to make sure I give our, my CEOs a lot of credit because they do a great job. It's one of those jobs, four walls all day, and this is what, it'd be like all you guys together <laughs> for 12 hours a day. And you're kind of got some mental health issues, and so do you, and so do you. And um, and now, and now you just you just stole this from me, and so you have that fight going on, and you better get this guy to shut up, or it's just nonstop all day every day. Yes, sir. Are you civilians that work at the jail? We do not. You was it uh, all run by the county then? Yes, it is. Uh, all county funded. Why don't you find it? Is, are you losing money on uh, the uh, on the jails or the drag on the uh, on the county? Um, I don't know. What, what do you mean by are you in the black? Is, is the jail in the black or in the red? Actually, we come under every year, okay. and one of the reasons we do is because, like the medical, we have to pretend when we do our budgeting that we're full, okay. and so and so by full we have 68 people. Well, when we run 30, that means we just saved on meals. We mm -hmm. saved on medical, and so when the budget washes out at the end, it's we have never been in the red since I've been there. That have I'm aware. Thought of. To the black. Have you thought to privatize it? Have not. Now that just came up somewhere else on the sheriff list serve. Actually, I was just reading because one of the sheriffs is struggling, and then it gets into this constitutional issue where the sheriff is supposed to have the jail. Okay, the sheriff mandates runs the jail. That doesn't mean he can't privatize it. But who's going to want to come and work? Now, you mentioned civilians, okay? you got to have the training, and there's all these mandates. Actually, corrections is coming where police are. Before, you worked at Myers. Hey, you want to be a corrections officer? Come on. You're a correction officer now. It's not like that. Now there's 160-hour training, so it's a month, and it's a field training program. It's You're actually here to stay. We want you. It's fighting the people to do it. I advertise job for corrections and for deputy. I used to get 50 applicants. For deputy, I had seven. <laughs> seven. Well, the only, another point is, you know, the economy's turned around the last couple of years, and with all the money that you're saving, what are they doing with all the tax money, all the tax revenue? Right that would be questions at the county board. Because <laughs> <laughs> honestly, it'd be costing them because it is. property taxes is up here are extraordinarily high. Well, I'm here to tell you that news came yesterday too. That was the first I've heard it. Property tax actually went up, so there's going to be some revenue. It was one percent, I believe, last year, and I think it's going to be three. And the county controller confirmed that. So there's there's a hundred and some thousand that's going to be coming in. So that's in the back of my my mind when I know, hey, I need a little help here. Because for a deputy, it was like 69000 with benefits, everything, just so you know. We have an $11 million county budget. The sheriff is about $3.5 million of that. The sheriff from the Wayne County Sheriff's Department. Oh, sorry, okay, well. <laughs> we were like a drop in the bucket to that. <laughs> so, but at least you can understand, you know. Um, but we, we try to do so many things. I mean, uh, this jail administrator orders everything in bulk, and he starts coming up with what's called snack packs, and he's selling things and doing things, and just the revenue's coming in. We're showing that we can do things, but we're also trying to tell you we need the help. Because we don't want to go to the taxpayer. We don't want to go to the county. Believe me, after doing it for the last six months, if I never went there again for a while, um, but that's my job. I mean, because each division is different, whether it's corrections, deputy, marine patrol, canine, uh, emergency management, they all fall under the umbrella of the sheriff. But the county did say their budget, their overall budget went up less than point, what was it, 0.25 percent. So not even a quarter percent it went up from last year to this year. Normally it goes up about a percent, 1, 1.2, 1.4, when all the shaking's done. Let's get some rich judges here. Well, I'm not, all I worry about is the sheriff budget. <laughs> Anything else? If people can get it and, and what they, again, I understand. Yes, sir. Yeah, um, 
back in the late 80s, I know there's a town down the state, Albion, Michigan. Yep, I've heard of it. Um, they were paying uh, college students, uh, you know, they're going through the police academy yep. as, as reserves. Okay. And the guys were lining up to, to work for eight bucks an hour. Yep. And they, so every car, every shift had two. Okay. They'd have a, a reserve and then they'd have the regular officer. Um, and the kids were enthusiastic about it. And they're getting the training, so within the time, they can complete it. And that's cheap labor. And another issue. But I'm, can I just comment on that issue? Because there are other agencies that do, do that. Where I get concerned is the liability part that comes in. Yeah. It's huge. I got guys carrying guns that aren't cops. Okay? And that's what happens. These are volunteers. Yep, they get a stipend, they get amount of money. When something hits the fan, which it will at some point when there's a reserve or somebody involved, and the sheriff's name's on the lawsuit, I just know it's like dealing with volunteers. I love them. They're great. They do so many good things. But when it comes to things where there's liability, I'm very, very cautious. And just so you know, I'm very cautious. Not that I would never look at it, but the turnover would concern me. The cost, the cost of uniforms. A pair of pants are a hundred and some dollars. Pants. This is a hundred, I'm not kidding, hundred and ten dollar pants. And as you keep getting new officers, they gotta have more than one pair. You gotta have at least two. We used to give three, I cut down to two. They gotta have a long sleeve, they gotta have a short sleeve. You know, and by the time you get them all the equipment they need, you're talking anywhere two, three thousand dollars just to get them suited up. So then they're here and they leave. Well, of course the next guy that comes not gonna fit me. He's gonna be short, he's gonna be really? So now, in the first few months, I, I went through our closets. We have everything by size. It almost looks like it's a, <laughs> I hate to say it, but it's true. And we will use that. We try to fit them first with what we have before I order more new, just to try to use it up. I'm oh, sorry, your second. Didn't mean to get off of my. Uh, I'm wondering uh, about your surveillance there. Uh, if you could show the doctor, you know, the, the mentally impaired fellow, you could show him uh, whether. We went there with a video. And no, wouldn't do any good. No, couldn't believe it. So that's that's my real issue. So my next meeting is because we met with the hospital under uh, Dale Kowalkowski. We met with the same issues. So the hospital got involved, Central Wellness got involved, and here we meet. And it's all warm and fuzzy. This is what's going to happen. And six months go by or eight with nothing, and then this happens. Because this all started, Central Wellness came and looked at this gentleman. Everything we had, oh yeah, you, you, there's plenty here to petition. Went and saw him, less than five minutes, and she said, I can't do anything. <laughs> that got me on the horn to the higher up. Now they sent somebody back. They reassessed him. Now they said, yep, we just got to have the doctor sign. That's easy. We were already over there. We go over there and they went sign. Because they didn't see the act, the, him acting up like that. So in other words, I have to wait until that person almost hurts somebody hurts one of my officers, drag them over there for them to say, oh yeah, I think he has some issues. That's sad. I thought you could go to uh, next to Kim and uh, they could sign a paper and get him committed. Well, we would be happy to be a petitioner. That's not the problem. You still have to certify. That's part of them getting cleared is through the West the months from now. There has to be that certification by a doctor. That's part of the, the puzzle. We even called ahead and talked to the judge, because sometimes the judge won't always necessarily sign, but for the most part they do. And he had already seen him in his courtroom, he was already aware, he was willing once the paperwork came, and we couldn't get it there. So he's still in our jail, which concerns me. How big is the Sheriff's Department compared to, say, the Road Commission or, or uh, the... Uh, I don't know what they staff. I know the corrections... I mean, like financially. I, I don't know the road commission budget. I don't know. Again, ours is about three and a half of the eleven million. Maybe just a touch higher now. Just, so you're about thirty-three percent. But not quite. It's more in the upper twenties. Okay. Yeah, and that's where it's been for a long time. Maybe you should have more of those animal control people because they have tranquilizer guns. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that lawsuit coming. Sheriff <laughs> <laughs> Hagen. But it worked. <laughs> I'll pay it. No, so anyway, that, that's kind of the, you know, 
We do our best. We're very conservative fiscally. We don't just spend the money. I understand. I would never want anything to go to taxpayers because I think the county has a responsibility to provide a service that you pay for. And my job is to give you that service. So that's what we do. A couple good things that happened I just want to share. Um, we did start a Facebook page we started when I took over. More informational. And I was worried there might be some people out there that have a few things to say. We've only had one, and it wasn't even really bad. I mean, I left the comment up there. So it's been very positive. It's amazing what you can do, put something out there, bad accident, reroute, people on their phones love it. And they stay away, most. Not all, most. Some still like to come just to see, what's all those fire trucks over there? And then we have other problems. But that's it. So we got the additional help. I have two guys right now that are in staff and command. Staff and command is a 10-week executive course, and it's, it's offered here in Michigan as well. I had the, uh, the delight of, in 2007, going to Northwestern in Chicago. 10 weeks straight, 20 college credits. Awesome. Best school I ever went to. Very intense. You know, it's, it's, it's and they got their, <laughs> their priorities are way up here when it comes to the education. Barely, you've got to want to go and study and, and take the executive part home with you. So we have that here locally now. We were supposed to host it. I put in last year to be a host of the school and got selected. Little old Manistee was going to host it this past January. Thank you, Lord, that it didn't happen. There wasn't enough people. Because if I'd have had 30 people coming to my facility with all that was going on, with my staff, with a couple of the major cases we had, I might not have as much air. <laughs> and then Dale, you know, he always told me, don't look that. <laughs> now I know what he meant. But anyway, so I have two guys doing the online version, and there's also a city officer. That money came from, um, from revenue sharing as well, since originally the 8000 is what it, was, what it costed. The online version was four, so I could send two guys, and it's pretty intense. It's not like you just get on a computer. I watch them. I see the work they do. They have to report things to me. They're learning a lot. So I'm very, very happy. We have two of my offers that are going to be graduating next month. They probably won't go through the full graduation until next year. That's something West, Northwestern does. They will invite them to go to Chicago for the graduation in the spring, which is a great thing. So I'm pretty proud of that. Uh, we also had a couple grants that we just got. Again, revenue sharing. We didn't have any equipment. If we had an active shooter right now at the high school, we would go there with, okay, yep, we got some, got some rifles. We got our guns. That's it. Now think about that. So I said, the first, my first order of business is I want to get some equipment. I want the big vest for the outside. Guys can slide over. I want to have helmets. I want to have gear that is going to let us respond to an active shooter. And so we just got that grant, and we're ordering everything right now. So the city and us came together, so we're all going to be equipped. That's a good thing. Hopefully we never have to use it. I hope it sits in the trunk of my car. But if we do have to, we will be ready. Uh, we also just did a grant with uh, Mason County, um, and this is the sheriff, I just love him, the previous sheriff. So see, he ordered me a new desk last December on his way out. Great, thank you, sheriff, you haven't had one in 30 years. It's falling apart, I appreciate it. Well, he didn't go to the board and get approval. <laughs> so Tom goes, yeah, it shouldn't be a problem, but you got to come and... You gotta come to Ways and Means and get the. <laughs> no. I have a chat with him, so I did. Not a big deal. We had a contingency fund. That's something else you may not know about. If we stay under budget, that half of it goes back to the county and half of it goes into the line where it was under. So if it's animal control, canine, that's like our little savings. So if I ever go over and over time, instead of going back to the county for money, I go to my lines and I take it from there. So it's kind of a good little thing. I hope they never do away with that. It keeps up from spending every dollar, because if we save some, if there's some to save, not always there is, and lately it's been kind of, you know, we, we have something to fall back on. Um, we did one other grant with Mason County, and the sheriff did this to me too. He wrote a nice letter last year. We support it for what's called a total station. Now this will be used for crime scene, traffic accidents. So right now, we call the state police. They come from Travers. Do you remember the bad accident on a fox farm a year or two ago? Road was shut down for eight hours. They had to bring this, what's called the total station. It's a way of electronically measuring everything, taking photos. It came all the way from Gaylord. So I got with the sheriff, Kim Cole. We talked uh, last fall, and he said, hey, do you think Dale would go in on it? Yeah, I do. And then you know Dale. 
I went up to him and he said, absolutely, we'll do it. I said, oh, can I cost two, three thousand? Yep, I, we'll, we'll do it. I said, okay, where are we going to get the money? He goes, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so anyway, amongst all the stuff going on, I get a call from the sheriff. We got the grant. He needs $3,000. After I'm going with my county board right now for this, I already got the correction officer thing up. I got things are going good. Anyway, it was one of those line item transfers. We had money in an account. So we're getting a $30,000 piece of equipment that we're sharing with Mason County. It will start in Mason. If there's an accident here, they drive it to us. We keep it here until the next incident. If it happens there, we'll take it to them and vice versa. So all my accident investigators are excited because that I didn't think we had a chance to get it, to be honest with you. So I have to thank my sheriff. Even though he could have put in there 3000 in his letter. But. Anyway, so just one or two quick other things. And, and again, I don't want to keep you folks all day, but I get really passionate on some stuff. Some issues we're looking at, you're probably already aware of. Um, public Acts 281, 282, 283, the medical marijuana. So we went and did some talks at a couple of the townships because there was a little misunderstanding Basically, if you don't want this stuff coming to town, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to enact any ordinance. Now, if you want to be considered for licensing, you have to adopt an ordinance, then you apply, and you can't apply until after December. If you watch the news, is going through it right now. They're seeing dollar signs, all right? And that's what this is. I went to a training, and a guy has a packet, a PowerPoint. It's fantastic. I'm still reading it off. There's so much information. But he shares what went on in all the other places, the other nine states, where the marijuana has become recreational. The issues, the billboards, the hospital runs, the numbers just from Colorado alone are just outrageous in three years. So townships are kind of bored. I haven't really heard anybody that wants to do anything in this county. There are a couple people that have inquired. Because again, if you like a business, the townships can charge them some money. So a licensing fee, then they apply for this license, and the state will get a fee, and a percentage comes back to the township, which in turn the township would be responsible to give 3% to the sheriff, or 5%, whatever the number is. I don't have the people to enforce now. I, I don't know what I'd do if dispensaries started opening up in Manistee County. I don't know what I would do. But as of right now, nothing's happening. It's just kind of stagnant. So I'm just telling you it's out there. There are some people trying to push it. Uh, they're petitioning now to get this recreational marijuana on the ballot for next year. You probably heard that. There was some, some things that happened a year or so ago and they fell short of the signatures. Well, right now they have over 100,000. They need 252 and they have like three months to go to get them. So I would really think that next year in 18 you're going to see recreational marijuana on the ballot for the voters. My sentiments exactly. Well, so, and only because I've been to some trains where I've seen, like I said, the billboards, I see pictures of the kids. Everything's getting to where, I mean, it's in brownies, it's in jelly beans, it's in all this different stuff. And it's in liquid form. It's, I mean, it's never in my wildest dreams in my 29 years doing this, I would see it like it is. And it just worries me 10 years from now. I, I don't know. Especially with the opiate stuff that's going down, the heroin. It's here. Don't think it's not. It's here. And that's another thing legislators need to know. We've got to keep our drug teams. Because that money from a burn grant is dwindling little by little by little. We're to the point now we're almost funding the whole thing ourselves. Luckily, my county controller's in our corner on that. I said, because if you ever take that away, you're going on TV and telling the people that we don't have a drug problem. I'm going to be off to the side where you can't see me. Okay? Um, another issue that you've probably heard a lot about, and that's the CPL. Okay? Concealed pistol license. Pass the House, go into the Senate, to do away with the licensing of that. Concealed carry. They want to do away with you having to have any training, okay, and be able to carry concealed. So from the Sheriff's Association, I, again, this is me, and I agree. I think the two are intertwined. I get nervous. It has nothing to do with Second Amendment. I get it. I get the Second Amendment, and I want people. But what I have an issue is the people who will just start carrying it, because they can. That means they don't shoot it. I can carry one pound. They don't know how to transport it. They don't know how to store it. They, they really are kind of ignorant to the rules. That's what I worry about. And there's all different parts of those bills. There's another one reducing from 21 down to 18. 
to let 18 to 20 year olds, that's in that package. Now with that, I guess they, they still have to keep the training if I understand that one right. There is some good, there's one in there that I like about banning it coming into police stations. You're not able to carry it in the police station. I like that one. Well, personally, it's just due because we saw what happened down in, was it Dearborn, I believe? It's down in Detroit when they walked in and they had a downright shootout here. That was just last year. Again, then it started, it had to do with open carry guys coming in, showing that they could do it. And then they're not listening to commands, and that's usually how things start to go south, is when the commands are given and it doesn't because it's my right, I don't have to. And at some point, things sometimes go south a little bit. Um, but they also talk about expanding the places, eliminating the can't carry in church or the casino, the hospital, they want to do it like that. So there's a lot in this package as I'm watching. Again, pass the House, set the Senate, and I haven't really heard here in the last month or two. And I don't know if I've heard anything. I, I just haven't. I've been watching that one kind of close. Because it's very concerning from the sheriff's standpoint. But I get it. I, I understand. But if you look back from like 2001 till now, slowly the restrictions are easing. So back in 2001 is when they started giving a lot more of these permits out. Right? Then I think Michigan passed a law somewhere in there about stand your ground. That law where you can kind of defend yourself. Then they said, okay, gun uh, sellers, you guys can do these instant background checks now. Okay? Then they said, well, we don't need um, the, the board to meet every month, the gun board. Let's do away with that. Everything gets straight. The people at gun board might say, hey, I know that guy. He's, I don't mean to keep picking on you, but you're sitting right here. <laughs> He's a, I know that guy, and there's some issues. Let's get him in here. Okay? And I'm just saying, now that don't happen, the clerk might not catch that. So again, it's little things like that that have the police a little bit on edge, but I understand streamlining, and I get it. So we are just kind of watching those just to, just to see how it turns out. I'm really not sure which direction it's going to go. But we will we'll prepare either way. Uh, and finally, I just want to say that my staff is amazing. And if you guys ever want to come out, see the jail, do a tour, do a ride along, I encourage it. If you're ever not satisfied with, let's say you call, you have a larceny of a lawnmower. It should take the police three hours to get there. Okay? And if you have concerns over things like that, I want to know about it. Because I'm going to pass you on to the person you need to. I will still handle it. You will see somebody. If it's traffic related, you will see somebody. I'll haul that traffic trailer out there, and you're going to be so happy for about three days until I move it to somewhere else that needs it. And we try the best we can with what we have. But we're not overspending. Mark my words, we don't do that. I'm doing just what I need to get by to answer your stuff. Any questions for anybody? Sorry, I didn't mean to talk too long. I know it's hot, and you guys are like, man, this guy never be caught. It's possible. <laughs> Police a drug problem as is right now, or is that going to be beyond your scope? Well, here's the thing. Just yesterday, so one of my guys, said guys, just left. So our new guy's going to training next month. So I called the city officer. I gave him four different complaints just yesterday. One of them in town, there's several cars all day long. They're leaving cash in the back of a house, and they're taking the goods. And it's happening at specific times every day. So I just turn that over. So again, there's so much that goes on with what I have now. We're not even scratching the surface. And, and you see with the opioid stuff, you see it. It's out there. And it's just so scary. It's scary that so many young teens and stuff, the overdoses. I never thought I was going to be a doctor, too. I mean, I wear a lot of hats. I don't mind that. You know, I'm a, I'm a policeman. I'm a counselor. I'm a teacher. I'm all those things. I never thought I'd be a doctor where I'm giving medicine to someone who just OD'd and I gotta bring them back to life. I have no problem doing that if from that point on they're gonna to try to make a change. But we've had some that go right back to an OD the second time. Not in this county, but it's happened. So now you have that that other balance. There's just so much to talk about with all that. There really is. Yes, sir. So not to uh, be uh, 
cynical. But no, that's okay. okay. <laughs> uh, is this just a county update of what's going on in the jail, or are you paving a road for uh, a mill increase? In Not at all. I told you I would never do that. And I sincerely mean that. Okay. I think our county is very financially stable. I think they have a responsibility to the citizens. I, I just do, and I felt that way for a long time. Only because I've been involved as the undersheriff for 10 years, I've been to all the board meetings, I hear, I see how they spend, I know what they spend, and I think finally the other day they heard me when I said, please tell me public safety is number one. It has to be. If it's not, we need to reassess how we do business. Well, I applaud what you do. So, well, I appreciate it. And it's what you elected me to do. Do you get applications from other states to become? Not very often. But once in a while, somebody will call and ask you for hiring. But I put it on a state site. Okay. I try to stay local the best I can. I won't lower the bar. If I have somebody local and I have somebody from Ludington, and again, the credentials are, man, six years experience, he's got this, this, this. This guy's from Manistee, he has nothing. Hmm. I will, I'll be honest, I'm going to hire who I think is the best. Now, sometimes I catch some flack over that. But I can stand tall and say, you know what, here's the bar. And just the other day I had somebody resign. He was one of our bailiffs. Those were the two other positions that were left. Bailiffs run the court back and forth, part-time, there's no benefits, 24 hours a week. He resigned. We had talked to him a couple times. He was struggling. He was at the Oaks for 25 years. Retired, a couple years out, he thought this would be a good job for me. He came in to me, he said, Sheriff, he said, I'm going to tell you something. He said, you have the bar right here, and everybody's there. I'm having trouble staying there. It's me. It's nothing with you, and I commended him because I could see he was struggling. But that's just one example that, I mean, we're going to set it to what expectations are of the community because I'll stand accountable for everybody. So if I have that officer that's kind of being a, you know what I'm saying, maybe a little aggressive, I want to know because that's not what we teach. I always, when I was on the road, all those years, I was on the road 18 years before I went into administration. My job when I stopped the car was to get somebody to say thank you. And I'd have officers look at me, no way, they are so mad right now. <laughs> That's good, That's a challenge. And I would work it. I would, I'd work it. Sometimes they didn't say it and I'd walk with you, man. Other times, they'd say thank you. And I had them say, why did I thank you? You just wrote me a ticket. <laughs> I had people write letters to the judge. Never been treated like that. It goes a long way. It's very hard though, so it's nice today. Some lady came up to us, or up to me when I was standing out there, just to say thanks. It's not necessary, but it should, it's nice to hear. And just so you folks know, 95% of folks are lost. Unfortunately, there's just a few that kind of rock that boat to, to, to make my job a little tougher. <laughs> you know what I mean? Is that politically correct? <laughs> Is there any other questions or anything? I, Oh, gosh. This is the part where he likes to tell jokes, I think. All right, when you had your trailer down, your speed, your speed trap over here. That's the city, and it's not a speed trap. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you have them out by the hospital, I think, once in a while. Yes, we did. Okay. Did that picture you got of me when I allegedly was speeding, did that turn out? <laughs> you went too fast. We'll talk later. <laughs> The speed trailer, though, believe it or not, does, the people see it, and whoa, and we have the lights on it, so if you're yeah. five over, it'll blink. Once you get to five or more, the red and blue lights will go. Oh, yeah, so people, well, yeah. some people have caught on to that, especially out in the rural out county. <clears throat> they want to see that light, and we've caught a few of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, in all seriousness, that might be one piece of equipment down the line uh, that I wouldn't mind getting a second one of. Because it's, it's so helpful, and the, and the townships and villages are, they beg for it. And I just keep moving it. And one thing with me, if somebody calls a complaint, I talk on the phone, but I make it a point to stop out to see them. Say, hey, how's it going? Well, right now, Pierport, I think they love the sheriff. If you go down to Pierport, if you know where that's at, right, right to Lake Michigan, it's on 13 Mile in between uh, Bear or Nekama and Arcadia. Beautiful beach area. It turns 25 as you get towards the end of that road, and it's a residential. And they go through there 50, 60 miles an hour. Wow. Legitimate. And I was standing there talking when I first took a first complaint there, and the guy went by and he goes, there you go. I, I couldn't even believe how fast it was. So 
So we're there a lot, and it's helping, and they're happy, so when they're happy, I'm happy. Anything else? Is, is totally, is that for insurance purposes or for legal? For both. For what? When there's a major, major accident, they cover all the parts of the... Oh, oh yeah, because what happens later, there's always a lawsuit some way, shape, or form. And so that gives us specific where we can do measurements. We can get out of the road now. Before you have to be in the road, you'd see officers with tape measures. Those days are done. Now they're off. They can open the road back up. We can have spots marked. We can trigger them. You can download the stuff. It draws pictures. Great for crime scenes. It's just great piece of equipment. So lucky to get that. And legal. And it's, it will help us later in the legal part of it. Yes, I don't want to shut it off, but... Uh, well, I don't want to bore people, and I don't want, you know, I know it's hot. I just have one question. What's your thoughts on body cameras? We were one of the first to get them. So... But what's your thoughts? Okay. Um, so far, I'm for them. And this is why. The transparency isn't there unless you show the people it's there. Okay? Unfortunately, and I'm going to tell you this right now, and I'll watch something will happen. Every time the prosecutor will call, I want tapes. That's the one thing. He always wants tapes of everything. And the one that's always like, oh, good, I can't wait to make the tape. I'll go make it. There won't be audio. Like, why isn't there audio? So we've had these things two years. We've sent it back to the company to, I won't say which company, because I'll probably be changing. But we've sent it back there three, four times. They make it right. They fix it. But we're still human. Mistakes still get made. It's still technology. I know how the perception of it looks. I get it. But our guys, our policy is either in the car or on your person. If you walk away from that car and have contact, that should be on. So, and it's been working really, really well. It's saved them more than it ever has hurt them yet that I've seen. Okay, thank you. All right, you're welcome. Okay, thank you. All right, you're Is there anything they want to say to the group while we're here? Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone uh, needs a uh, discount from NRA, by that way, uh, I agree with you on getting those. Uh... Well, we're leaving the GOP picnic. This is a nice sign, Trump Pence 2020. That big old American flag down here, the POW flag. <laughs>